just been a Comic Con visitor. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I feel like I've seen you every five seconds. I, yeah, I know, I know. Well, yesterday was nice to be this sort of doting husband to my wife. You know, she was here with uh, uh, the television show she's producing, so I got to be sort of the other side. Usually, she's like a great a great date and you know comes around with me and supports me so I got to do that for her yesterday and it was really amazing I'm really proud of her so uh, I know because I keep seeing <laughs> yeah I know I know we've been around Crazy. we've been around so where is Mike when you pick up the video later Mike is um, dealing with the repercussions uh, emotionally of losing two partners and sort of everything that he went through uh, we pick up a year afterwards I'm sure everyone has told you that that's like the one thing we're allowed to say um, <laughs> and yeah so emotionally he's having a hard time he's you know uh, Ryan and Mike kidnapped, tortured, and killed a detainee in the, the last episode, so that just doesn't go away. It's not like, oh, okay, well, you guys killed the bad guy, it's all good. They uh, they broke protocol, and our, Mike especially is dealing with the repercussions of that at work, um, and emotionally uh, and spiritually, you could even say, I think he's going through quite a quite a crisis, so he's in a dark place. Uh, this, this sort of shiny Agent Weston that we found in the pilot is all but gone by the time we start the second season and I think he still has his moral core I think the things that that people really uh, liked about Mike that sort of the, the levity that he brought the the attitude I think that's still inside him but it's not on the surface anymore it's it's a little hidden and he's he's broken down it's been a hard a hard year basically you know he's, he's had to kill people he's had his life threatened and uh, very severely and uh, and a lot of people he loved got killed so he's it's pretty rough do you feel like in a way he started as anyone would have started? They're new, they're excited, and now you're slowly turning into almost like where Ryan is. Absolutely. After years of yeah. going through. It's I, I, after the the Fight Club episode, I call it, where where Mike got um, kidnapped by Roderick and had the, the shit kicked out of him. Uh, that to me was the turning point. That's where I realized, oh, this is this is a mirror. Mike and Ryan are a mirror. This is what who Ryan potentially was. And after all this bad stuff happened, this is who he became. And is, and Mike is. We're we're at the crossroads of like, what will Mike? What will Mike do? Because he's being put through the same thing. He's losing people. He's having his life threatened. He's going through the exact same things that Ryan did. Will he become Ryan? Will he fight it? Does he have that potential to to go there? And I think that's the drama between Mike and Ryan for the second season is sort of seeing if if Ryan will help Mike if he knows how to help Mike if Mike will ask for that help you know that that's sort of part of the relationship is you just never really know how to ask for help sometimes and these are two men that that, that are in a in a field that you know you're put through extreme situations but I don't think that you necessarily ask for help whenever you need it like a lot of people like me you know would see I think when you're inside of a situation it's it's really difficult to to know what to do, to know what to ask for. Whereas if we're standing outside, it's like just that's your buddy. Just ask for help, you know. And and I think there's there's a bit of that um, between Mike and Ryan. So. So did you always know your character was going to live at the end of season? No. When did you figure it out? <laughs> the last episode when <laughs> we shot it and I didn't die. Um, there was at one point uh, there this show like the show we get really broad strokes of what's going to happen and we were all sat down and warned at the very beginning of the first season that people in this room will die your character some of these characters will die don't take it personally it's not that we don't like you or your work but that's what kind of show it is so i was i always thought i was going to die when like i might get shot in the chest like i guess that's the end when mike gets kidnapped and beaten to a pulp and stabbed oh, i guess that's the end I, I happen to survive you know and i actually think that because i got beaten up so many times and, and my life was threatened so many times it actually saved me because it would have been anticlimactic to kill me <laughs> when i survived the fight club i was kind of like okay maybe i'll make it because if they kill me the next episode it would be like people would see it coming mm -hmm. and uh we know that kevin williamson does not like for people to see things coming so um and but there was a scenario in the final episode where both deborah parker and myself were in jeopardy and it was sort of, it reminded me of a Dark Knight situation where it was like Harvey Dent and, you know, they, and they had to make a choice and, and Ryan didn't know he was, who he was going to save. And it was sort of that scenario. And that was broad strokes. That was just an idea that was pitched out. And I was like, okay, that sounds awesome. I hope I'm the one that makes it. And then, and then obviously there were story points that, that came together and, and they made choices. And, and unfortunately we lost Annie Paris, who played Deborah Parker, because she was amazing to work with and a great character. Um, and Dad Harvey. Yeah, and died horribly. Well, if you're gonna go, I, I, but and someone said this today too. I think Kevin Williamson said this today that Annie was like, if you're gonna kill me, like kill me right. And I have the same attitude. Like I would hate. I don't want to die off the show, but if I'm gonna go, 
let's let's go big, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, you just never never really know. How confident are you now? I feel better, <laughs> um, but I still, you know, they joke around. I feel like Marcos Sega always jokes around and is always saying like just things for me to hear. I'm like, you know, Sean's gonna die, and I'm like, what? what? <laughs> so uh, there's they always there's always a possibility. So you just never know. I feel much better about it, but yeah, no, I say that I'll die next episode. How many episodes have you? Filmed? We're about to start shooting the sixth episode. So we can say that you're safely. Yeah, in. yeah. About halfway into the season, I'm still alive. <laughs> so in the second season, do you have more input into your character and what he does than in the first season? Um, no. I mean, no. I mean, input is I, input is. I mean, as an actor, I think you always have input. You are given the words in the scenario, and your input is what you bring to that character. Because you know, there's a million other actors that could play Mike Weston, and they would bring their lens and their insight into it. So my, you know, the way that I look at it is that. You know, I don't sit down and talk with Kevin Williamson. Like, I think the character should go here. I mean, that's his job. That's what he does. He knows exactly what he wants everybody to do. He knows the pacing. He knows we're each little puzzle pieces that help tell this grander story. So it's not as if I sit down and have, you know, conversations with him about what I want to do, like what I think Mike should be doing, because I'm not a writer. I have no idea. But what I, what I do bring and what I can bring, my insight is within this scenario, how do I make it emotional? How do I make it as dramatic as possible? How do I make it funny? How do I make it engaging? You know, so that's that's my insight. So I, it, in that sense, I think I always have that. I think that Kevin Williamson, as he works with actors, really writes for them, and so I feel much more confident and comfortable about the stuff I'm getting to do this season because I think Kevin knows me better as an actor, and knows the things that I can really sink my teeth into, and and honestly, some of the things that don't that I can't do as well. Um, and they and someone like Kevin plays your strength, which is great. Makes you look as good as possible. I have a weird, I have a weird question. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm nervous. <laughs> um, I know that you have a twin brother. Yeah. Has that ever come into play? That maybe possibly something weird might happen on the show. Oh, um, brother coming up. No, we. Uh, that, that would, would be a really different... screw us all. Well, that would be really. I mean, but we would have to be followers of that. If you bring in like a twin, it's got like that's got to be something evil. That can't be anything good. We did an episode of Fringe together, and I feel like Fringe is the kind of show where you, you have yeah. twins yeah, you or Warehouse Thirteen. Great. Actually, there's Aaron was on a show called Warehouse Thirteen, and obviously there's there's ample, you know, uh, possibilities for twins in that. But our, our schedules didn't really work out. We sort of did talk about that, and it didn't happen. But I, I can't see Mike having a twin. We know he has brothers. That was established last season. Who we haven't met, but uh, I, I mean, I guess Aaron could be one of the brothers, and it just not make a big deal that we're like twins. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. But um, yeah, that hasn't come up, so we'll see. How did they find that actor? He looks just like him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank hey, you. I know that guy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank oh, okay. You. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Can you grab my yep. I don't know what that is. That's I don't have to go there.